How do you clean baseboards? How often should you clean baseboards? What do you clean baseboards with? What do you clean baseboards with if you have a bad back and you can't bend over? Those are great questions and we're going to talk about those today. Hi there, I'm Angela Brown and this is Ask a House Cleaner. This is a show where you get to ask a house cleaning question and I get to help you find an answer. Now today's show is brought to us by Savvy Cleaner Training, where we train house cleaners and maids and Airbnb owners who do all their own turnover cleaning service and homeowners how to clean. And today we're going to take a lesson right out of our learning library and we're going to show you how to clean baseboards. Now before we begin, I have to tell you that the hallmark of a good house cleaner are clean baseboards. And so at every cleaning, every time you vacuum the floor, you're going to clean the baseboards. I know what you're thinking, oh my word, every cleaning? Yes, it's true. Every single time you vacuum the floor, and this is the answer to how often should you clean them, every time you vacuum the floor, you should also clean the baseboards. Here's the reason why. As you open the door to your house, dust blows into your house, and it's bee pollen, and it's all different kinds of stuff from the outside elements. And as it comes into your house, it settles. Where does it settle? It settles on the floor and the baseboards. And as you track stuff in through the house, or as the air conditioning kicks on, dust and air gets blown around the house. And it doesn't settle on the flat walls. It settles, it hits the walls, and it goes right down and it settles on the baseboards. I know! It's awesome, right? Because it's so easy to clean. Now, most baseboards, and here's a secret, they're painted with a white semi-gloss paint. They are designed to be cleaned frequently. And because the hallmark of a good house cleaner are clean baseboards, I'm going to show you six different ways to clean baseboards. Now, the secret is work smart, not hard. So you're going to use the easiest, quickest, fastest tool to get the job done with the least amount of chemicals, right? That's going to be the easiest way to do it. Okay, so first and foremost, if you go into a house, and let's say this is a deep clean, you go into a house and the people smoke inside their house and there's nicotine and there's tar on the sides of their baseboards. We need a heavy duty degreaser that's going to cut through that. Also, if people do a lot of frying in their house and they cook things like bacon and fried potatoes and french fries and stuff like that, there's going to be grease in the air. And as that grease settles, it's going to get stuck on everything, but it's also going to get stuck on the baseboards. So we're going to use something like crud cutter which is designed for the environment and it is biodegradable. Here's a secret. It also goes on clear. So if you're, you're going on the baseboard, which is the white semi-gloss paint, which is designed for cleaning chemicals, you can spray this on, grab a white terry cloth and wipe it off, and your, your baseboards are good to go. Now, there's no dwell time. We don't need to spray it on there and leave it for five or ten minutes or any of that stuff. Spray it on, wipe it off, and you should be good to go. So that's way number one. And that's only, only if you have really dirty, icky, sticky baseboards, okay? The preferred way is just by using a Swiffer Duster. Now, the Swiffer Duster is designed to trap dust. So you do one sweep, and all of a sudden it grabs the dust and it holds it in here while you vacuum, and now you're good to go. It's so easy, right? And if you have the Swiffer Duster on the back of you, like I always carry mine with me, so that while I'm vacuuming in every room, I can pull it out. I can dust the baseboard in one move, grab the vacuum, and it's not two separate projects. It's kind of the same thing as I go. All right, numbers three and four. These are the different ways you can clean them. One is with a brush, and this is a soft bristled brush. And so let's say that you have lots of dog and cat hair that have settled on the baseboards. What you want to do is you want to brush the baseboards down. This uses no chemicals whatsoever. It just grabs all the dust and the dog hair and the cat hair and it brushes it out onto the carpet. Then you vacuum the carpet up and you're good to go. So sometimes in a really heavy duty gunk, it's not sticky gunk, it's not icky gunk like grease. It's just like dog hair dust gunk, right? So this is a really good brush for that. All right, another method that's very similar and again is the same number of steps is going to be the vacuum attachment hose that also has a little brush. This is a really great opportunity to go along the side of the baseboards. Again, it's cleaning the baseboards first, step number one, and then vacuuming the baseboards number two. So it's still a two-step process, but this will suck all of the dog and cat hair up into the hose so that it doesn't go out onto the floor, which in a second you're going to vacuum again anyway. 
So it's kind of a choice if you want to use the brush or the vacuum attachment. So either of those two ways, this is way number three and way number four. All right, now way number five, and I give you permission to use way number five at any time during a deep clean or a maintenance clean if you need it. And that is your eraser sponge. You want to get your eraser sponge wet and it will wipe up any black marks or scuff marks that either your shoes or your vacuum hit while you are inside the room. So if you go in and you look around and you do your once over of the room before you clean and you see that, oh, I got six scuff marks here that are black. You're going to want to wet your eraser sponge, have that with you, and then you can wipe those up as you go. So at any time, you can wipe and erase those scuff marks with an eraser sponge. All right, and way number six, if you have a really bad back or bad knees and you can't bend over, what I recommend is a duster, and I will leave links in the show notes to this if you don't have this or any of the other things that we talked about today. This is one of those that comes with those tall cleaning kits where it bends and it goes above the ceiling fans and the lights and the window ledges to reach up high. This is microfiber and it has all these little fingers that collect dust. Now this head slides right off and it is machine washable. So once you use it, you can wash it and use it again and again. But literally you just drop your arm and you walk along the side of the room and you brush the baseboards as you go. And it collects all the dust so that you don't have to bend over at all. And if you're super tall, it does have the attachment on the end. So you put your telescoping wand in and it will let you extend the reach as long as you need. So these are the six ways to clean your baseboards. Why do we want to clean them? Because it is the hallmark of a good house cleaner. How often do we want to do it? At every vacuuming, right? Now you know the secrets. Now you know how to do it. All right, if you found this helpful, please pass it on to a friend. If you have questions, you can leave those in the notes below. If you like it, give it a thumbs up. And until we meet again, leave the world a cleaner place than when you found it. Yeah.